Hello everyone, I am Zagabele, the producer and host of an Afrocentric show called My Africa. Today we have prepared a special episode as it is Black History Month. And before we proceed, I would love to say Happy Black History Month. So. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Damak Afreot. I am the producer and the host of Diplomat of the Month, a show that runs on Art TV. Uh, today, I am very happy to be here with you discussing Black History Month, among uh, many other topics related to it. Thank you for inviting me, Zaga. You're welcome. Uh, Roka Sagar from Arts Business Cafe. It's going to be quite an interesting topic. We have these conversations <laughs> every day at the office, so I think we're going to have a really interesting yeah, conversation, definitely. especially about uh, Black History Month. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> quite eager, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, as for me, my name is Yab Saran Bimtekka. I produce and host a show called Art Science on African Renaissance Television Services. So you may have seen me uh, educate my fellow colleagues <laughs> on uh, scientific <laughs> matters. So, yeah, <laughs> African History Month. But the biggest qualifications we have is being African for once. Yes. Hmm. You know, the fact that we're Africans gives us the right mm -hmm. and also it gives us the chance and the platform to say something about our continent and our motherland so you don't have to be an expertise you, know? you can actually have something to say because you're in africa okay so as an opening to our discussion i feel like we should first talk about what our africa is so let me start if you guys let me <laughs> so my africa is a land of beauty a land of untouched opportunity when I say a land of beauty, this sentence actually really describes Africa for me because whenever we think of beauty, we think of the land, the mountain, the forest, the waterfalls and everything. But there is beauty even in those uh, unseen part of Africa. There is beauty in our history, there is beauty in our culture, in our clothes, and um, even, in, even in our food, there is beauty. So that's why I, I really choose to describe my Africa as a land of beauty. Also, can I tell you my version of Africa? Please do. <laughs> Please do tell us. So Africa, my Africa, is one with racial harmony. One which is connected with our spirituality. Yeah. Because I personally believe the two biggest things we have as Africans that intertwines between all of us is our racial har harmony and our spirituality. So for me, my Africa is the one who accepts us those two factors and which got to the point where we could balance every race to the same goal and to the same ideology of others. Nice. What about you? My, my Africa. It's, uh, it's quite a complicated and controversial, I guess. Uh, my Africa is mysterious because we have all these resources. We have all this youth. We have all this energy. We have all this glamorous history, but where are we? My Africa is a bit mysterious. Because of such reasons. Yeah. It's kind of a question of why are we not where we're supposed to be? As the resources that we As have. As the resources that we have, but in the history. So uh, I see the potential, as you say, but we're not where we're supposed to be yet. And that's why my Africa is mysterious. Yeah, so to the question where he said that, where is Africa? The Africa for me that I see is much like my house, where it's my home. I feel comfortable in it. But there is a lot that I need to do on it because it's not quite where I want to see on it. So for me, it's beautiful, vast history, uh, best food in, in the world as well. Africa has the best culinary experience in the world. It's not too spicy or bland. It's, it's right in the middle. middle it, yeah, perfect it's got combination. That, exactly. <laughs> When you go outside and eat, what do you say? Not like home, right? Yeah. So we're not just only the source of mankind, but of good food? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yes. Europeans went colonizing for spices. <laughs> so, yeah, the spice trade was, was huh. yeah. nice yeah, one. Yeah, the spice so, trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's uh, how I see Africa. Hmm. A house that could turn into such a beautiful home. Okay. So as I have mentioned in the opening of this show, to this program is especially prepared for Black History Month. So, and as we know, Adwa is coming. So I feel like it's really important for us to relate those two ideas, Adwa, the Battle of Adwa and the Black History Month. What is it that you guys have about it? So for me, especially not only for me, for the world, how 
they, we correlated Adwa with Black History Month. Is yeah. The significance of Adwa is that unity won above everything. Yes, that's true. Unity among the people. When the Adwa war was done between farmers and well-constructed soldiers. So let me, specify, let me specify the things that I said. Yeah. Do you think the Battle of Adwa has an impact on Black History Month? Totally. You do? Totally. Okay. <laughs> so Black History Month is a symbolism of Black people's independence and the struggle they've been through and their accomplishments as well. So Adwa signifies every single thing mentioned above. Adwa was won. It was possible because of unity. It was possible because of racial harmony because what that's the message that Black History Month is trying to carry. So it, there is nothing better that would explain Black History Month than the unity of African people to win something that came to enslave them at the end of the day. Do you have something to say to oppose him? I just feel like you have something to say to <laughs> oppose him because... <laughs> yeah. I feel like Black History Month was really affected by Adwa, but not in the way uh, you mentioned. I feel like uh, Black History Month was affected by Adwa. I don't want to be binded by this racial uh, category and again mention co colors. We'll, we're going to get to that. Later. <laughs> I feel like because we had this argument a few days earlier. Africans showed that they can win battles. Africans showed that they can fight soldiers. Africans showed that they can defeat armies. So I think they gave us an agenda. Whoever wanted to enslave us in the modern world gave us an agenda by systematically uh, and institutionally creating some sort of racial profiling and profiling our, our history by giving us Black History Month. So I quite believe it's quite contrary in uh, supporting the positive strives of this so-called colored group, but I don't think it's the right path. Uh, Black History Month was quite affected by Adwa, but it gave the enemy an, another way to enslave us. That's mm. because they were afraid of our physical strength. Yeah, unity and stuff like that. But for me, I, I seriously believe that the Battle of Adwa was a paradigm shift. It was a total turn for Africans because as an African and most African countries were colonized. so they had this mindset that as a black people, they were not able to do what they want. They were not able to actually um, control their market and do what they really want, as, even as a country. So when Ethiopia won the battle and at the Battle of Adwa, things started to change. They were like, oh, okay, so now as a black people, we can actually defeat white men and we can actually run our own territory and actually have our own governor and you know practice all this foreign policy the way we wanted to so it was a paradigm shift and it was that critical moment in which the self-image that we have as a country and as a, as a continent mm -hmm. changed you know self-image does not only work for individuals it works for a country and and continent and the whole world and, and in the bigger yeah. picture because it's the summation of us that brings africa together so for me, to, to that's add the point. More to that point, uh, I would like to point out after the Adwa war, the newspaper that ran in Britain, in, in Britain especially in, in America, depicted uh, Minilka's white. That's what they did because <laughs> they, it, it, it was impossible to comprehend that a black person, a black leader, won a war with a technologically advanced country, which the which they do not expect completely. In that sense also, it put us in the map. I, I will agree with that idea. Yeah. Isn't it quite uh, funny and ironic that those two countries are where the Black History Month is most celebrated? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question before we proceed uh, into anything else. I'm not quite clear. Are you, is the question, what has Adwa contributed to Black History Month as in the celebration of the month? relegated to black history? Mm -hmm. Or is it what has Adwa done for the history of black people across the world? Well, actually, in order for it to be celebrated, there has to be something done. So it's kind of interconnected for me. So, so are you asking, is Adwa the reason celebration started? Not, not the or, reason. It no. can be the only reason. But do you believe that it has an impact on, on the, the history of... Uh, yes, on the history of black people. Of course it does. And 
does. <laughs> of the course. other thing is, <laughs> why do we relate Adwa to Black History Month? It's uh, of importance because we were one of the very few as a state to win a war against European colonizers. But uh, other tribal people also have won battles. We shouldn't only talk about uh, Ethiopian wars as well. For example, the most famous one being Shaka Zulu defeating the British uh, soldiers. He was a tribe leader, his own tribe. He led his own tribe, but before that, he brought other tribes, if I'm not mistaken, there were around 12 tribes, he brought them together, defeated them. So Adwa was one of the main factors, but there were other African battles that served uh, to show that white people, you know, they weren't it. Mm. They weren't the best. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should also brush up on, like, Adwa has contributed as well, but so did every uh, African, whether it's by sacrificing their lives or putting a stamp on history, uh, have shown that white people aren't the only ones that could be aggressors or that had power or stuff like that. And mm -hmm. for the one that you said, uh, maybe they were afraid of our physical strength. <laughs> this is from a bit of a scientific perspective. <laughs> Biologically, African people are more prone to being muscular, not physically big, but muscular. And we are associated with speed as well. We're also associated with height. We have one of the tallest people in the world, not individuals, but as people. And we also have one of the shortest people as well, the pygmies. It was just a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> spice. Yeah. 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 On top of that, what I really want to say about the physical part is that in the Battle of Adwa, it was clearly shown that it was not the amount of weapons that you have or the number of soldiers that you bring onto that you know, state that you want to colonize, but it's about the feeling of understanding. It's the feeling of knowing that that's your place, that's your home, as you have yeah, mentioned but earlier. When, when you say you know? that, uh, I don't want us to take the credit of the war strategy that we no, had no, no, on no, no, Adwa because all. it was yes, not exactly. luck. It was, it was not spontaneous. And it was it not was easy not, at all. It was yes. not easy. We had to strategize. We had to lose the first war. We had to do it the second time. We, we had to go through a lot Besides to win Adwa. Besides all those things though. So we cannot just brand it and say we won without having any weapon or no, anything because no. we had knowledge. It we was had a indigenous war. knowledge. Sure she meant weapons that were on par with the Europeans back exactly, in the day. Exactly, like we didn't have in that, comparison in that to sense, the in that yes. sense, we had bows agree. and arrows. They had rifles. That's what she was trying to say. <laughs> exactly, but the feeling of understanding each other and the feeling of really loving your home and the feeling of being one. That dignity, that unity, actually, in terms of protecting Ex exactly. the land. Exactly, exactly. I have a cr critical question, though. Uh, so, <laughs> basically, the history of Adwa is part of the expansion of the Italian Empire into Africa, as were many European coloni colonizers, right? So, Britain was uh, in Kenya and in South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. <laughs> the French were mostly in. West Africa. In this case, uh, it's on February. What? Right? Black uh, History Month. Yes. And in England, it's on October. Ah, yeah. so it's that's different. One. Ah, yes. okay. So, in any case, they were uh, colonizing, and the Italians didn't have much. Uh, they thought it would be easy, I it, guess. It, I think it would, it would be easy. So, in any case, it, it was part of their expansion into Africa, part of their competition, part of their European endeavors into Africa, part of the world's nation building, how empires were built. So the world is filled with history of nation building and violence and of war. And conflict, yeah. And conflict. Why are we any different and why have we branded it racially? I would love to answer that. Why did that? <laughs> the question is no, I, I'm, I'm genuinely yeah. asking. So it was a... Uh, why grasping. is it not perpetrated as any other war in exactly. instead of saying uh, exactly. white that, and black? White and black. We're still giving it racial profiles. Let me, let me, let me ask you mm. this critical question. So the main reason Europeans expanded into uh, Africa was searching for resources. Call it labor, call it minerals, mm. call it anything. anything. They were looking <laughs> yes. for resources. It was not a personal rush or it was not out of disrespect for the color. Initially. Initially, whatsoever. Yeah, initially, yes. But 
through many research, they created the narrative that the whites are more advanced, more uh, superior. superior, that they evolved more. Uh, those kind of narratives mm. grew on the, as the growth of science came. So some researchers uh, made uh, claims that whites were more evolved. Yeah, uh, Africans had smaller brains compared to white people. Yeah, yeah. And so they created so the, those kind of narratives. Yes. My critical question is, I think it's going to be a question His for everyone. critical question for the fourth time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why is it being racially profiled? Okay, let, let me get the chance to answer sure, this sure, first. Go ahead. So, first, the first and the biggest thing is, they made it look like there was no civilization in Africa. There was no intelligent civilization in Africa. While we had cultures, religions, spiritualities, ways to heal ourselves, ways to treat ourselves, uh, philosophy, books, everything. We had it for more than 3,000 years. And it was like we had nothing. So it was the first thing that they had to do was we, they had to break us. They had to break our king mentality. They had to make us submissive. Not for really that generation, but generations to come. So they made it in a way you, the next generation would teach the next generation to be submissive to the ideologies of the white person. Yeah. It's not a one generation thing. So they come to, let's say, let's, we can take, um, let's take Ethiopia, for, for example. Even if we were not colonized, you know how much we are influenced. Yeah. Not only now, even back in the day. Not even being colonized, but having relationships with the Western world made us lose certain part of our reality or our true selves. Then let's go to another African country. You see the ideology they have towards these people is, it's totally differentiated. So we are at the point where we are, we accept it. We accept it that we are beneath them. Yes. In a way. So what I'm trying to say is there is a difference between expanding your territory and dismissing and completely getting rid of a generation or a way of life to force your own way of life upon the people. Uh, I'm sure you've read the book or heard about the book by Nikolai Machiavelli, the, the popular... The, prin the, the prince. The, the prince or the... The prince. Okay. The prince. Popular book. You know what they say? He's an Italian, by the way. FYI. In the age of uh, colonialism. He was in the 15th century or 16th century, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a phrase in his book says, when you crush your enemy, crush him completely so that their revenge will not be felt. Maybe, what if it was a completely good strategy to crush us? It what is. if the narrative of still racially profiling our history is still part of the narrative of crushing Africa, of crushing the age-old, thousand years old civilization? I want to give my two cents on this topic specifically. Uh, my stance being that I don't agree with what you've said uh, per se. I mean, there are some parts that I agree with. For example, when Scottish culture largely is similar with Ireland. Uh, so when, when the Irish were introduced to Christianity, their culture was completely destroyed. So they had to change uh, some of their gods into saints and angels. But as dumb as humans did not feel like they were beneath them, they were they operators. They did. For example, when they conquered Scotland, they made those barbarians, Highlanders. They would call them names so that people would not be empathetic towards them. This is what any conqueror does. The best way uh, to keep you submissive Demoralize is... Demoralize you. Exactly. So the same thing they did with Africa as well. They take your culture, they destroy it. But what I agree with you a bit is, they were more harsher than they were with the rest of the world. They were very harsh with the rest of the world as well. For example, Koreans and Japanese people do not like each other. Because Japan went conquering uh, Korea and China as well. And Nanking, there's, there's a part of history called the Rape of Nanking by Japan. Japan really messed a whole lot of places around her. <laughs> they hate each other. <laughs> they look the same. Yeah, yeah, they look the same. 
their language, the way it's written, it, yeah, it has the same characters think, yes. because it was taken from uh, China way back then, so on and so forth. But Japan messed up. So it's the same thing, whether you're white or black, it's the same thing any conqueror does. But, for example, I personally believe the most evil person in the world wasn't Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin. The scramble for Africa began when one of the kings of Belgium made a, a certain African country his private land. And the Berlin Conference happened. So on and so forth. Yeah. That king of Belgium, though, you know what he used to do? Mm -hmm. He used to cut off children's hands if they didn't collect enough minerals. And you know what he used to do? He'd take it back home and show it and parade it to his people. And to make matters worse, to rub salt on wound, they would make chocolate in the shape of hands and enjoy them as, del <laughs> as treats. Yeah, but this is extremely unnecessary. So this, this comes from them not thinking about Africans yeah, as this humans. Is where, or exactly. This is where I agree with you. Yeah, that's that's the point I'm making. We, they don't think we've finished our evolution cycle True. to the point where it, like the final cycle the of truth, evolution is being white. No, actually, what I believe is they know that we have finished the you know, revolution. No, that that, that is the actually ideology true. they're trying but to sell for exactly, us. Exactly. That, that's the ideology that they're trying to create inside of us. Yeah. And then they made us accept it. And one of the things that I kind of disagree with you, Brooke, is that um, I don't feel like it might be a means or a way to actually destroy us as an Africans, but not for us to be so weak that when we, if we revenge for it not to be felt, you know, that's why when the time, when time changed, they changed their shape, their, their way of actually affecting us, right? They don't come and actually say, okay, now they won't point a, a gun and say, I'm here to colonize you and but just submit do. to me. The truth is, they have another way of actually trying to colonize us through our styles, through our cultures, through our even our educational systems, right? So I feel like even even after ten years, they won't they won't use the the system. They're gonna change. So if we are able to think ahead of time, if we are able to understand ourselves and really focus on the right point, on the right agenda as a, as an Africans, and really you know like cleanse all that. Um, you know, foolishness mm. inside our head. I feel like very foolish. <laughs> <extremely foolishness. laughs> it will be a turning point for mm. us. <laughs> but mm. I have to say, though, I don't hate the white man, especially for doing that. They do whatever is necessary to put themselves on top. So in any bad situation, there's always something to be learned. Mm -hmm. So what I personally learn is that I will do the same thing. Not the evil, I won't perpetrate evil into the world, but I would do whatever it takes to get myself into the position that I want to be. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of work, you know, it's not easy killing people that, or that, chopping hands. That makes you... There's always, yes, there's always, and another thing, everything they, everything they uh, taught us, everything they brought to us, you know, all the gifts they came bearing back then to steal our lands, at the end of the day, even if the land was stolen, they were still gifts. So it's up to us to use whatever it is that we got from them. Yeah, That's the point. Just, That's the point. They gave us something that can't be reused again. So no, no, you see? It's up just up. like something. Example, oh. they, they said, uh, like, here's science. Okay. Here's how, what you do, right? Yes. You're, so what do we do with it? Do we go, We what? already had science. No, as so you know what I meant. Like modern science oh, come was usually on. modern. Everybody has science. Everyone has their own. I'm fields sorry. Of I'm study. sorry. You know what I believe? I believe that if they were not, if they didn't come here and colonize us, we would have upgraded ourselves. We would have unlearned some things. We learned some things yes. and learned some new things at yes. the same time, and became that you know country or that continent but, that had the modern science. They knew that we would get there, so they came. They actually, you know, diminished every single thing that we had except some of it. So and you're then, saying they killed off every knowledge that we have? No, they made us not to see it. They uh, just made us I to take it for granted. I just felt like wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. But I have to, like, I want to make something very clear here. So don't, uh, we should not identify the level of success or the level of modernization by the Western modernization we understand now. Yeah, so okay, that's true. So if the, the path that Africa was taking was one with nature, Mm -hmm. We were one with nature. Our medicine was from nature, our religion, our beliefs. We, we grew through nature. 
You know what I mean, right? Yes, yes, I do. So if we were never affected, we could never imagine the Africa we could have had today. Mm -hmm. we, might, we might not have even the need to invent these new technologies. We, must, we, we might have been in peace with the living that we had. We should not see that as a bad thing. Yes. So now we defined modernization by having these technologies around us, living in cities and so on. Yes, but that is, the again, the definition given to us. Mm -hmm. So we do not even, we, I don't think we understand what Africa could be if we were never uh, colonized. You know, colonized. Our path of growth was never influenced by outside. Have you noticed one thing that's in common between you guys though? All the points you raise. Uh, yeah, I was a bit neutral to this, but especially you too. Uh, I sense contempt. I sense contempt against white people. You know, that's systemic racism. That's, that's my fear. That's, that's what's happening. So in modern black culture, there's a, a large amount of contempt to white people who are white and some sort of sympathization towards people of color. Even though there's some sort of level of cont uh, contempt towards them, they're still sympathizing towards each other. The big question is, why are you? Why are all you few guys having contempt to white white people? Maybe <laughs> why? Why? I mean, like, <laughs> let, let, oh, wait. I'm not finished with my point, Demi. Sure. I have to raise this question too. If people, if we continue as a race, as black people. I don't want to mention the labels, but if we as black people continue in this dynamics of naming people through their colors, by the way, very interesting point. I've been telling you this the last time we had this conversation. If you lived in the Arctic Circle for like, uh, and your offsprings uh, of another person who's Ethiopian to you and your husband, who are both Ethiopian, if you guys lived in the Arctic Circle for like, five, six generations, and your offsprings lived for five, six generations, you would turn white. Okay, I don't think it would be <laughs> that fast. <laughs> I, I mean, I get his point, but I don't think it would like, be that fast. She would be growing white because her, through evolution, her, their skin would become lighter and lighter. lighter, lighter, lighter. But you wouldn't True. be white. White is not only skin color. There are physical features to Even be white. It doesn't matter. Because it, it, doesn't doesn't matter. matter. it doesn't matter. Wait. They, they have the biggest noses you've ever seen, man. I'm telling you. Racial profiling. No, 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 no. This is very true. I mean, that's what they said about Jewish people as well. So, my point is, we're arguing, we're branding people through uh, natural and uh, physical uh, traits that we developed through the areas in the world we were living. Black people are dark-skinned because we needed the melanin because we were living the uh, equator. And... We need to resist the the ultraviolet radiation that was, you know, that comes around the equator. So we're basically branding ourselves on how we fight the sun. So, one. <laughs> Let me finish no, my question. Wait, Let me finish my question. And why are we branding things through color? As long as we're talking about it through color, it's gonna remain being a problem. As long as we're branding our history through color, it's going to become. Then how should we... Ignorance does not make the problem go away. Exactly, but that's just like true. The, yes, it's one But we're still talking about... We're but still talking about... You have to understand, color. because it's based on color. It's not based on location. Oh, a geographical location? It's not ge yeah. geographical location. And melanin is not only to protect us from the sun, that's another conversation. But when you say, when you brand someone, uh, the white person did this or the black person is this way, it's the reality of the world we live in. So... We have to accept the reality that is given to us. Wait, we start from acceptance. So, first of all, we have to accept the situation Africa is in. It's in neo-colonialism. We are not out of colon the colonial system. The ways are just changed. We'll come back to that on our next question, I think. Yes. Um, the ways change it. In the, the, for the example you raised, if you go to Europe and lived seven generations, in, you would have become like the, there's a the world will become mixed race at one point. White cannot produce black, so you have to understand the white race is the only race that's decreasing as a race. But aren't you being racist by branding no. them as white and black? No. My my point is my point. I think though, 
that is a different point. Right now, we're not talking about our black people being racist or our white people being racist. The whole conversation started with what have we Africans contributed for our history? So I feel like we're going off in a bit of a tangent. So yes. <laughs> the point is, yes, we have worked. We have done things to say that we're proud, even if situations weren't uh, optimal. And also that the Battle of Adwa actually had its own influence on the black history. And I'm sure everyone is at their home. Tremendous. It had, it had a tremendous impact. Yeah. So yes, people at their home would be saying, Really saying a lot yes. of stuff. They'd be giving their own opinion. They'd be saying this or that. Please make sure to tell us what you guys are thinking about and what you guys have to say about the topics that we have been discussing on our short SMS 6121. So just to proceed, the next one is the one that I've been really waiting to talk about. <laughs> yeah, she's wearing her boxing gloves right now. <laughs> you know she's what? pulling her sleeves. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Trust me, because I feel like it's really important. So we have mentioned the, the relationship between the Battle of Adwa and the Black History Month, and why it's, you know, what the two is related by. So do you guys believe Black History Month should be celebrated? Brooke, I'm not asking you. I think question. we should give Brooke the chance first. Uh, yeah. well, I honestly believe like... I honestly Brooke don't. <laughs> we would have to say anything <laughs> if we give them the no, chance. I, let's, let's, just take first. It up. let's just take it up first, then we'll... Yeah, I think that's a good we'll, system. Yeah. You're right. I think I'm going to get battered. No, I know. Yes. No, no. <laughs> Just say you're my. Yeah. 